SpaceX is introducing Starlink Aviation, a new service that will enable airplanes to use its satellite internet network, and it might just be the fastest in-flight internet yet. In this video, we will talk about everything you need to know about this innovation, good or otherwise. Come with us as we get right into it. SpaceX and the Starlink Aviation Over the course of three years, the Starlink Aviation project successfully launched over 1,000 satellites into orbit a milestone that was reached in January. In the past year, Starlink has launched scores of satellites with 100% success. This has increased the number of operational satellites to well over 2,000 in orbit. Starlink claims to provide a service in 32 countries at the time, but the young internet provider is still experiencing delays in getting equipment to its prospective clients. In the near future, some planes may be able to connect to SpaceX's Starlink satellite broadband service via the company's Starlink Aviation Service. When passengers board a SpaceX plane, they will have instant access to the company's high-speed, low-latency service. Starlink versus various in-flight networks Some US carriers, including GoGo, provide access to an air-to-ground wireless network. Wi-Fi on planes is typically provided by satellites in other regions of the world. As a service to commercial airlines, Viasat provides in-flight internet access via satellite, about 22,000 miles or 34,000 kilometers in orbit, where there are geostationary satellites that stay in place. SpaceX has launched over 3,000 Starlink satellites into a 340-mile low Earth orbit. According to Bloomberg, Intelsat, the leading provider of in-flight services, has its satellites installed on roughly 2,000 planes and its ATG systems installed on another 1,000. Starlink, on the other hand, is a group of small satellites in low Earth orbit that work together to provide high-speed internet access. In about 90 to 120 minutes, the device makes one orbit around the planet. This directly cuts down on the amount of time it takes users and satellites to send and receive data. This is called latency. This will allow Elon Musk's firm to bring high-speed internet to remote areas that have been previously unconnected. In fact, this is one of Starlink's primary promises, as the company aims to offer competitive services in places where they already operate, whilst also expanding internet access to previously unreachable areas. Installing a small satellite dish at your home to pick up the signal and send it to your network is all it takes to get online. The company gives many options for mounting on roofs, yards and outside walls. Starlink also has an app for Android and iOS that uses augmented reality to help users figure out where their receivers should be placed. Just how fast is Starlink's internet service? One of the problems with small satellites is that they don't give much space, which can be hard for big planes to get the signal en route with a lot of air traffic. SpaceX says that how quickly the system is changing could lead to big improvements in the near future. SpaceX asserts that all passengers will be able to access streaming-capable internet at the same time, thanks to up to 350 megabytes per second speeds on each plane. Video conversations, online gaming, virtual private networks, and other high data rate activities are all possibilities whilst looking at a latency as low as 20 milliseconds. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, made the claim on Twitter that using the internet whilst in flight will be the same as if you are accessing internet from home. Starlink's coverage. According to SpaceX, Starlink aviation will cover the entire planet, including the poles. That the polar regions are not currently covered by geostationary satellites is highlighted. The US, Canada, the UK, France, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Ireland, Belgium, Switzerland, Denmark, Portugal, Australia, and New Zealand are all currently served by the growing network of satellites in low Earth orbit. Starlink's pre-order agreement lets people request services in Italy, Poland, Spain and Chile, amongst other countries. Starlink still has a long way to go. They will probably need at least 10,000 satellites in orbit before it can claim to cover most of the world. And SpaceX has shown signs that it wants as many as 42,000 satellites in the constellation. At best, it's currently about 20% there right now, with coverage focusing on areas between 45 and 53 degrees north latitude. Even so, Musk has been very confident about the Starlink timeline. 
He has said in an interview with Mobile World Congress in 2021 that Starlink would be available everywhere in August, except the North Poles and South Poles. Shotwell said something similar in June, when he said that Starlink would be ready to use all over the world by this fall. Where is Starlink available? At the moment, Starlink service is only available in a small number of places, including the US, Canada and others. But the company has already sold more than 100,000 satellite terminals, and, as more satellites are added into the constellation, the coverage map will continue to grow. Starlink's long-term goal is to get fast Wi-Fi everywhere on Earth, even in cars and planes that are moving. Is this a service for all? SpaceX has said it's seeking Federal Aviation Administration certificates for a variety of aircraft, most of which are typically owned and operated as private jets. It seems more like a service for private jets than it does for commercial airlines. SpaceX lists the ERJ-135 and the ERJ-145, the G650, the G550, the Falcon 2000 and G450, the Challenger 300 and 350, the Global Express, the Global 5000, the Global 6000 and the Global 7500 as aircraft types that can use Starlink Aviation at the moment. Over time, the firm will expand its list of compatible planes. In its promotional materials, SpaceX depicts a sleek, low-profile receiving station perched atop an airplane. The phased array antenna in the terminal can be directed electronically. An aero terminal, power supply and two wireless access points and harnesses are all part of the Starlink aviation package. In 2023, according to SpaceX, the company will begin sending packages to customers. Development and Funding US authorities recently rejected an $866 million federal grant to Starlink, citing the company's satellites as a technology currently under development. In April, Hawaiian Airlines and SpaceX Starlink announced a partnership under which it will supply the service to Hawaiian's planes. This is evidence of the industry's trust in its abilities through which passengers on Hawaiian's Airbus A330 and A321, as well as its new fleet of Boeing 7879 Dreamliner aircraft. These will be able to use the in-flight Wi-Fi for free beginning in 2023 on flights to North America, Asia and Oceania. In order to reach this goal, the technology was recently shown off at an American regional airline. The company, JSX Air, was the first company to use the service. Launch and Pricing the company is charging $150,000 for the hardware needed to connect a jet to Starlink, with a monthly subscription service between $12,500 and $25,000 a month. The delivery to aviation customers are scheduled to start in mid-2023 according to the company, and reservations require a $5,000 initial payment. The Test Flight Transmission speeds greater than 100 megabytes per second were observed during the test flight last week, which is significantly faster than the current standard of commercial aeroplanes. As determined by the UCLA app, the speed was more than adequate for streaming videos from on-demand content services, making video calls via instant messaging apps, and unrestricted web browsing. Even though there were only 12 individuals on board, there were times when demand peaked at levels typical of a flight between 20 and 30 passengers. This was due to the use of various electronic devices. Let's compare that to the 300 or more that a wide-body plane can carry, and it looks a little cramped. However, technological progress is swift, and prospects for the near future are bright. Starlink has been the subject of many arguments, Concerns have been raised by scientists about how Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit will affect the view of the night sky. Satellite internet competitors like Viasat, HughesNet and Amazon's Project Kuiper have also noticed Starlink's success, which has led to regulatory back and forth and attempts to slow Musk down. Recently, DISH disagreed with Starlink's claims that 5G expansions in the 12 GHz band would make its satellite signals unreliable. What about bad weather and other obstructions? That is one of the problems with satellite internet. According to the Starlink FAQ, the receiver can melt snow that falls on it, but it can't do anything about the snow that builds up around it, or other things that might get in its way. The FAQ also states, we recommend installing Starlink in a place where snow and other things won't block the field of view. 
Heavy rain or wind can also affect your satellite internet connection, slowing it down, or even making it stop in rare cases. And that's it, so thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more updates. What do you think of the recent developments with Starlink Aviation? Let us know in the comments section below. And again, thank you very much for watching.